Hey, good morning. We've got a surprise today, some new additions to the ranch. Rick and Laura, some friends of ours that are raising these goats that we get, are making a special delivery. So stay tuned if you want to see that. It's going to be fun. For those of you that are new here, we've got the new billies for a reason. They're a myotonic cross. Our, our perfect scenario is, at least we think, would be a full-blooded myotonic cross. And we did that for one main reason. What we've discovered on the Spanish is they're a little more difficult to finish, I think, than a goat that has more muscle, develops more muscle sooner. And the myotonic have that trait. They also have the trait of parasite resistance. So for our program, that's a perfect fit. These billies that Rick and Laura brought are 80, 85% myotonic, I think is what he said. He's breeding up a purebred myotonic. And what makes it nice for us too is they're within probably about 10 miles as the crow flies from us. That's one of the criteria that if you, if you read Greg Christensen's book, which I highly recommend it, if you're a commercial goat person. He always recommends find somebody that's raising them as close as you are, the same way, as close to the same way as you are, and close proximity to you, as close as you can get, and you'll have the most success. The Spanish plays a, a, a key role in our mothers and in our, 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 our billies, so our replacement nannies. So our long-term goal was to raise all of the females we needed and then in order to have replacement nannies every year, which we wanted to, because we wanted to turn them as they got a little bit older and replace them with younger ones. And as we started getting in that position where we were to the point where we had met our resource allocation for what we what we needed on our land as far as number of goats. Then we simply needed to have replacement nannies that were Spanish, and then we needed to have other goats that were finishable, that would get meaty, that would do well at the sale, that would do well at the process, or all those things, and that's where the myotonic came in. Now, Rick and Laura do raise them a little bit different than, than we do. They feed them just a little bit, and then if the, if the goats need it, They'll worm them. So there may be some that won't, won't work over here. And we won't know that until we, we get further along in the process. So for these billies to kind of blend into our program, they've got to be off a of feed. They've got to be introduced to the dog. And that's one of the most important things is to get the dog in there and introduce them. And, and make sure the dog bonds with them and they bond with the dog. Likewise, we want them to get used to staying with the other billies. And the other billies are really big compared to them. But once we kind of give them some time in this little trap, they will hopefully become great friends. Look at them eating that brush already. Mm -hmm. At the very Boy. least, hopefully they'll be tolerable and the myotonics realize, hey, we need to hang out with those guys. <laughs> they look like they can take care of us along with the dogs. So that's really the only type of integration that we have to do uh, for the billies that are coming in because like I said, they came from close to here. So they eat kind of the same type of forage and, and that kind of stuff. We have a lot more browse, but still uh, the climate is the same. As, as much of it as possible is the same. So once that's done, everything should be rolling. Well, we got them all set up in the pens and they're ready to go. Got water down there. We'll feed them in the morning. There's one other thing I have to do. I got to get a protector for them. And I, I see him. <laughs> he doesn't know he's going, but I see him. There he is. What's up there, Sammy? 
What's up, big man? What's up, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. You want to go for a ride? Yeah, I know you do. You old big sucker. Good night. Not you, Red. I know you don't want to go. Okay, we got him. Sam, you okay, buddy? Oh. Got to show you some new ghosts, big man. Yeah. Right there is why you watch getting your chains at the gates. <laughs> God. I just grabbed that chain right there, and that sucker just ignored me. Thank goodness. Holy smokes. Let's go, Sammy. I got Sammy now. I guarantee I just about got nailed right there on that gate. I have never in my life, he smells it. I've never in my life seen anything like that with a rattlesnake. I've seen bull snakes everywhere. But a rattlesnake up on a pipe right next to the chain, right next to the chain you're fixing to unhook like that. That's ridiculous. Come on. Come on. Another reason we want to go ahead and get them introduced back here like this is, is so the dogs don't have to cover two different groups. You know, it should be easy because we've got two dogs here now but it's just one of those things that so sometimes they'll split and cover them and sometimes they won't. Uh, so I just, that's one of the other key things to get done while we're integrating them. If they don't integrate well and kind of hang with them, that could be extremely <laughs> catastrophic because the, the, there's some heavy myotonic in here. There's a couple of them that'll go down if they get startled. Oh gosh, yeah, he's a booger. Uh-oh. The hundred percent's going down. <laughs> He'll get up in a minute. Look, Sam, you got to protect him. See, look here, look here, look. You got to protect him because he's gonna go down. <laughs> come on, come on, buddy. The goats also have to get used to me and get used to us. They've got to realize that we're gonna be in and out and around them, and but at the same time, we're gonna be treating them like livestock. And so they need to know how to drive and they need to know how to come. Oh boy. <laughs> Sam, I don't think I don't think they much care for you, buddy. Come on guys. You're gonna be glad he's here <laughs> at some point. You can see these billies are still extremely nervous of me being in here with the pins with them. So I'm just kind of easing around here and just letting them go by and moving them from one pin to the next and, and, and having Sam come in here with us and Sam lay there and Sam lay over here and, and just little things like that to get them to a point where they're more comfortable with us. And that'll just take a little bit of time. Good boy, Sam. I'll be back in the morning. There's water right over here. You've already been fed. You just stay here and do your job, okay? Good luck, Bubba. Some people might be asking, well, why didn't we just cross them with a savanna or a boar or something like that? And we are a, an, an extremely wet area. The parasites in, in our area are gonna be pretty high. They're gonna be uh, difficult to manage with just a wormer. And I can say that because I've had a neighbor that had boars and uh, they had parasite issues. I have, I had two neighbors that had them, had parasite issues, and they finally had to get rid of them. So it's a different area right here. Uh, that would be the easiest thing to do if it worked. Uh, if you're down south where you get about 12 inches of rain, that, might, that may work really well for you, I don't know. But here, uh, it's, it, can, it can be an issue, so. That's why we didn't do that. So we're down here the next morning. There's Mr. Sam. Looks like they've gotten used to him, so that's good. Now, obviously, I'm watching for rattlesnakes on the fence today. Hey, guys. How's everybody this morning? Good boy, Sam. Good boy. Yeah, I got your food. There you go. Good boy. 
Okay, well, I just opened up this pin to the myotonics. Let's see how they do with brush. The only issue I'm kind of having with these guys is they're terrified of Sam. They need to learn that they better look for Sam and or some of the other dogs. I'm leaving them pinned up in this pen to give Sam and give really give them a chance to kind of bond a little bit with Sam and realize that the dogs here are their protectors and they need to stay with them. Okay, this is the final step in the introducing the Billies to our place. Uh, we've bonded them with Sam, so they're hanging together. And then this morning, we went and got the rest of them. The big Billies are in the house. So what we're doing is Shane's over there, he's letting the little Billies out. I'll probably have to go get them with the bucket. But he's letting them out, and then we just brought these in, and so we'll let them meet each other in a neutral. Do what? I bet that's right. I'll bring their stuff over there. Anyway, you want it, we wanted to let them out in a neutral area where nobody has claim over it, so we brought them both in at the exact same time into this little trap. And that way they may have a little bit better chance of not a lot of bullying going on. There's going to be some because that's just what they do. It's the pecking order. So, uh, I think that's the final step. We'll, we'll check them in the morning. Of course, Sam's going to stay in here with them. Uh, but right now, Shane's trying to get them out of there. And they're like, oh, no, we don't want to come out of there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, got it, got it, got it have to get this this bucket of feed and and rick and laura they feed their goats a little bit and we don't so when i get those billies i i'd slowly back them off a of feed and rick actually gives me the same he gives me a bag of the same feed that he uses and it gives me plenty of time to back them off so that's what i'm just about done with and and that's the main thing that they kind of need now yeah come on you see that tricolor there? See if you can pick his brother out of these big ones. Come on. Look here. See, they just want to eat now. Come on. Let's come over here. Let's see the big guys. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, he's a nice one. Come on. Come on. Huh? Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, today we'll give them very little feed because we don't want to create a conflict with these bigger ones. Uh, so I'm going to give them a little bit, kind of a little bit away from them here. I think. We'll see. I, I, I want them to eat, eat kind of a little bit here just to keep continuously backing them off slowly. Now see, Rebel and Tigger. They know what this is, so they're not gonna... <laughs> there you go, fellas. Uh, probably, because it, it'll create too much of a, a conflict. Which one did you like? This one? Right this one right here? Yeah. Yeah. This is the one. This I think he's a little bit older than this other one. This is the one right here. If you look at him from the front, he's real broad chested. Mm -hmm. 
but I like more of a I want I want width in the hind end I like this little white one I think he's they're all nice now this is this is the 100% the red and white oh, he's right. 100% yeah he's the one that if you spook him he'll lock up <laughs> <laughs> come on guys He's, they're saying, are those does? So you think um, all these will cover your, the does? I mean, these are good on them all cover two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, nineteen. Nineteen, how many does you got? Let's see, there will be uh, around 360 or so. 360, and how long are you leave them in there? Oh, uh, we'll leave him in there for about a week. That's a lot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> say, hey, guys. Lot. There's a big... There, that's good. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to spook those guys. Now, this tricolor uh -huh. right here, that's his brother. The big boy? Yeah, the bigger one. This one's got more myotonic in him, so they're, they're mm. shrinking the size and hopefully adding the, the width here, the thickness. They don't like running in tall grass. What do you think of that sound? You think they could rattle up a buck? It's like these. It'll it'll be hard pressed if we can get those to actually stay with these, and it, it, they really need to. Uh, it took it's taken them it's taken them a solid year. I mean, every bit of a year to to get to where they'll halfway stay with them. They still venture out on their own a little bit, but those myotonics down there that have more myotonic in them, especially the two that faint. That they need to hang with them so they'll be around the dog. See, part of the deal with these is, I mean, they're pretty. Those one with the horns, I think they could, I think they could handle at least one coyote. You know, if you had a pack of them, they'd be in trouble. Uh, put it this way, that one with the big horns. I've had a hold of him before and it was it was everything I could do and that was with a rope on him. And here we go. Not the finished product, but it's better. You can see all the new billies are right here close. Here's the Spanish and there's the last year's billies that we bought from Rick and Laura. And they're here close. Uh, they're they're tolerating and that goes both ways but they are tolerating they're doing well uh, they're eating well I've got them backed off of their feed I brought a little bit of corn mixed with very very little pellets that we had left from Rick's feed that he brought us and I'm trying to scatter that a little bit for both animals to get them even closer and even more used to being around each other and let them understand and realize that there's going to be times that these guys have to give a little bit to those guys otherwise they might get hurt but you never know one of these guys <laughs> when they grow up they may just be all there and it may be a, a knockdown drag out and I'm mainly thinking of, of breeding season, which we will need these this year. We're going to have enough females that we need them. And if you've been watching our videos, we just recently banded all of our boys. So this is all we got, unless something changes, which that's fine. We're excited about that. We'll put these Spanish out first, and then we'll follow them with these. So I think it's pretty good. I'm excited about it. And 
hopefully you are too if anybody is interested in where we get these mitonics drop us a comment we'll uh we'll give you a, a way to get in touch with them or a website or something like that thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time